Yo, 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 what is good, people? Welcome back to another episode of the Dream Chasers career mode and the final episode of season seven of this career mode. If you are new to the channel and you don't know how this series works, at the end of each season, we do a season review video where we basically review the season, as the name may suggest. Go through all the player growth, the player stats on the season, what we won, who scored the most goals, all of that good stuff. We also talk a bit about the future and what I'm going to do for the next season, season eight, which I'm trying to make possibly could be the biggest one yet in terms of the, the storylines that I've got going for it. Uh, and also at the end of this video, we will have the goal of the season compilation from all of the best goals in this season. So go ahead and drop a comment once we do get to that part, the number of your favorite goal. They should be numbered in the video. So drop in your comments. What was your favorite goal of the season? Uh, also let me know, boys, if you of course are up to date with the season, who's your player of the season? Yeah, player of the season award. Let me know who you think it was in the comments below. If you did miss the last episode, I encourage you, definitely go and watch the last episode and catch up on the season before you watch this video. Yeah, so without further ado, let's get into it with the spoilers. Dream Chasers seal treble triumph. Yeah, they've broken every club record along the way. Cash Money Mark has led his boys to an unprecedented treble lift in the Carabao Cup, Premier League, and now the Champions League. Now, it's not unprecedented because we've done it last season, so that's a, a bad use of that word right there because the precedent got set last season. But with so many youngsters in the squad, people are still wondering if there may be more to come from this Dream Chasers team. And there definitely is because there will be a season eight. We're going to try and win a three-peat, three Premier Leagues in a row, and Cash Money Mark can put himself next to the greats Sir Alex Ferguson and Pep Guardiola as one of the only managers to win three Premier League titles in a row. We bottled getting the uh, quadruple, losing in the FA Cup final, which I'm still hurt about. Yeah, I'm recording this video right at the back of the last one, so <laughs> I am hurt still. Like, I feel just pain, bro. Like, that could have been a perfect season. But anyway, let's get into the season review. So I think first thing is first, let's show you everything that we won this season. Of course, we won the Premier League and here is how the Premier League finished. So Dream Chasers take the number one spot. Liverpool, who completely bottled the league, only losing three games, two less than Dream Chasers, but drawing 13 games. That is crazy, bro. They drew like seven games in a row. That just let us win the title. But Man City come third. Spurs finishing above Man United on goal difference. Not even goal difference. They got the same goal difference and same points. What does it go down to then? Goals four, isn't it? I'm sure that's the next thing. So um, Spurs beat United to a Champions League spot by three goals. That is crazy. And tied on points again, losing out on goal difference by two goals. Was Wolves? Wolves finished P6 in the league, tied on points with United and Spurs. That is crazy, bro. Yeah, Leicester City just behind as well on 64 points. And then Chelsea in eighth tied in eighth on 60 points with Chelsea, I mean Aston Villa, sorry, um, and let's see who got relegated then, Bournemouth and West Brom and Burnley, Burnley actually gave us a good game on the last day of the season, so did we relegate them? Nah, three points wouldn't have got them out of the relegation zone, but still, Everton finishing 14th, love to see that, our rivals um, being a Liverpool-based team, Arsenal only finished 10th despite their great team at the Av, so a pretty weird Premier League all around, you know, very competitive, from like 8th upwards, but then the top two spots, like just really no pressure from Man City all season, it was just us chasing Liverpool, and then Liverpool bottled it, so I'm hoping next season all these teams that are improving clearly, like Leicester and Wolves finishing P6 and P7, bro, do you know what I mean, like those teams, you're not used to seeing those there, like they're, they are improving, so I'm hoping even next season everyone can improve again, and there might be like a six or seven way battle for the title. I mean, we really need it to be. Otherwise, the game's just not going to be entertaining, let's be honest. But I am going to make season eight very entertaining. We also won the Community Shield. I forgot to mention this. We nearly won every single thing this season that there was to win. We won the Community Shield, won the Premier League, FA Cup. Let's see what happened there. Of course, we know what happened there. We got beat 2-1 in the final by Swansea City, which is very unfortunate. We beat Man City in the Carabao Cup final 5-4, possibly the greatest game of FIFA I have ever witnessed. If you've not seen that episode, it's called the greatest game of FIFA you'll ever see or the greatest cup final you'll ever see. Make sure you watch that episode. Yeah, because I might go back after this video and watch it because that game right there, I don't think I could ever top that. That was elite. Speaking of elite, this is a pre-season tournament where we played three games, even though there's eight teams in the group. Uh, and we tied on points with Bayern Munich, finished second there. That's what it meant by. We nearly won everything that we could have won. If we won the pre-season tournament and then the Community Shield and then everything else, that would have been unbelievable. Let's see who won the Super Cup. 
That was, of course, Dream Chasers. So again, another thing that we won. <laughs> Champions League, who won that? Dream Chasers, yeah. A complete domination and devastation. I love our badge, you know. Early on in the career mode, people were saying, I'll oh, change your badge every season. Nah, bro, this is our badge. When you see that badge, you think of the Dream Chasers. Do you know what I mean? You think of the Band of the Hawks, actually. That's what it's based on from Berserk. But still, anyway, Europa League, let's see who won there. Roma got beat by AS Monaco 3 2 in the final. So, Roma um, or Monaco, even, are the team we're going to be playing in the Super Cup next season. Leicester City getting beat in the semi finals there 3 2 on aggregate. That is devastating for Leicester City. You had a good season in the Prem as well. Uh, and Roma as well 7 3 on aggregate against PSV. That's a Dream Chasers level score there. Sevilla won the Conference League 1 0 in the final. I feel like Sevilla have won a UEFA final 1-0 like 100 times in their lives. But it is time to look at the player stats. Let's see who won the Golden Boots in the Premier League. It has gone to Joe Gellhardt and Erling Haaland, tied on 25 goals each. They both shared the Golden Boot. You wouldn't think Haaland got the Golden Boot and then City only came third. Do you know what I mean? Like when we win the Golden Boot, it's because we win everything. Um, but even still, Brozier must be the reason why Wolves are so high up the pitch, uh, or the, the table, I should say, not high up the pitch. What am I talking about, bro? Because uh, he's got 24 goals in 37 games. Brennan Johnson, fourth in the list there for Brighton, an ex-Dream Chasers player, and he is just ahead of a current Dream Chasers player, Marcio Barbosa, who came fifth in the goal scoring charts with 21 goals in 27 games. What a record that is. And if we would have played the full season with Barbosa, remember he got injured for two months. So he missed out on playing approximately like 10 or 11 Premier League games. He definitely would have won the Golden Boot, bro. Barbosa only needs to score four goals in those games, in 10 or 11 games. Of course he would have won the Golden Boot. Other Dream Chasers players that feature though in the top scorers list is Palacios in eighth. I know a lot of people are waiting to see how many Palacios scored with us. He scored 18 in 30 in the Premier League this season. And City Blood Clark Dieng as well, another great record, scoring 17 Premier League goals in 28 appearances. What a player. Don't forget, though, three of those goals and about 10 of those appearances came for Chelsea. So, realistically, he had like 15 goals in 10 games for Dream Chasers, something like that. So, insane. Arthur Vilk down in 18th. He obviously missed a lot of the season. 14 goals in 24 games, though, no doubt he would have been up there if he was fit for the whole season. And that is it. Let's check out the golden assist. Who does that go to? Barbosa and Vilk. Both tied on 14 assists each with Ono on 13 and Bellingham on 10. That is complete devastation of the assist scoreboard, bro. You kidding me? Yo, how did Vilk get 14 assists in 24 games? And Barbosa got 14 in 27. Both of them out for a majority of the season and still up there in the charts. Nobody can touch us. That's insane. Even Ono, who played the whole season, and Bellingham, still not up there. Well, they are up there, but not up top. You know what I mean? Ono, though, his passing this season has been incredible. I'm not surprised to see 13 assists on his record. Palacios also making an appearance there with six assists in 30 games. Not great, but we used him mainly as a sub in the Premier League, you know, and he is a goal scorer rather than an assister. Let's see the clean sheets. It is, of course, Kowalczyk. Complete domination again, bro. 18 clean sheets in 34 matches. That is huge. Simon picking up the second place there, tied with Mendy from Chelsea. But Wolves goalkeeper Simon with 11 clean sheets this season. That is why they are so high up the pitch. They had a very high top scorer and a lot of clean sheets. I said high up the pitch again. I'm an idiot, bro. Switching to the FA Cup now. Castro won the golden boot there. Wow. Okay. Swansea City's Castro, that must have been the player who got them to the final, might have scored against us, I don't know, I put that game out of my head, but look at that, in second place, City Blood Clark Dieng, 8 goals in 4 appearances, that guy is incredible bro, yeah, we've also got Palacios with 3 and 6, as for assists, that goes to Hashimoto, 6 assists in 3 games, didn't he get like 4 in 1 game, so that's cheating a bit. Kiprat Skelly got two assists in three games there. And Morgan Elliott makes his first appearance of the video with two assists in five matches. Billy Keynes and Neymar also on that list there. Neymar, bro. <laughs> he got an assist and got injured right after, didn't he? Um, clean sheets. Did we keep many clean sheets? I can't even see us, bro. We're not even on the clean sheet list. I guess it is what it is. Carabao Cup, the top scorer was Tommy Bailey. Wow, I did not expect that. Six goals in five games for Bailey, beating out Erling Haaland. And not many Dream Chasers players there, even though we won this cup. It was, of course, our cup squad, the, the youth team. So Palacios is down there with three and six. Um, anyone else? No, that's interesting though. Tommy Bailey picking up a golden boot. Shout out to him. Most assists. Palacios tied on most assists with Phil Foden. 
So Palacios picking up an award too. Morgan Elliott with two and three. Arthur Vilk with two and two as well. Shout out to those guys. I don't even remember playing Vilk in the Carabao Cup, but I guess we must have. Uh, and clean sheets does not go towards Kowalczyk. Oh no, it does. Tied on two clean sheets in three games. So yeah, shout out to him. And now moments of truth. Let's see who got the golden boot in the Champions League. I've got a feeling I know who it is. Marcio Barbosa, 12 goals in seven games. What an, an absolute dog, yeah? What an animal, bro. That record in the Champions League is crazy. I think Ronaldo's record was like 15, wasn't it? In one Champions League campaign. Correct me if I'm wrong, but we'll be pushing for that next season. Trust me. Only other player we have in this list is Sidi Dieng in 18th with five goals in five appearances in the Champions League. Love to see it. How do we win the, the Champions League and only have one or two players in the top scorers list? Did we have loads of assists, maybe? Yes, there we go. Arthur Vilk with the golden assist. Seven assists in four games. He is going to be an animal in season eight. He has been locked up. We saw it at the end of the last episode. He's been locked up for too long, yeah? He's going to be an absolute beast when he comes back fully. Ono in second with six in ten. And Hashimoto has got four in nine there. Bellingham makes an appearance with three in ten. I thought Bellingham might have made an appearance in the Premier League top scorers, but we have three players tied on three, or four players tied on three, actually. Bellingham, Bailey, Cairns, and Barbosa. Clean sheets does not go to Kowalczyk. Kowalczyk is nowhere to be seen. He is in ninth place with three uh, clean sheets in 12 appearances. Tied technically in sixth place there. But five clean sheets for Mere from Fiorentina. You know, he conceded four against the Dream Chasers. We're just built different. A good sign of things to come there though, boys, when we get back to the England team. Remember, we're doing the World Cup run at the end of season eight. Uh, Joe Gelhardt scoring 25 goals in 37 there for Leicester. What a player he's turned out to be. And he's going to be our star striker in that World Cup run when we get to it. So look forward to that at the end of season eight. But let's get to our squad hub review. I know we went through the stats there, but we're going to go through the individual stats again after we cover this, the player growth. Yeah, I love looking at player growth. It's one of my favourite parts of career mode to look back at the end of the season, see how many overalls players have gone up. Kowalczyk went plus two. He's now at 88 and one of the best keepers in the world. Tony King is joining Blackburn Rovers when the transfer window opens. I've got to mention this. He leaves the club at the end of the season. So shout out to Tony King, yeah, an absolute veteran of the club. Gabriel Nicholson has potential to be special. Only 17 years old, so definitely room to grow for this lad. He's 17 with that beard. Are you kidding me? He's at 17. That's someone's lying. Someone's lying there, yeah. Plus three, though, to 67. He needs to increase even more because we can't sim games with this guy in goal because we just lose. But when we play, he's actually really good. Theo went plus three. One of the world's best. He's on his way to 99. Can you even hit 99 with these players? I don't even know. But who do you think will hit 99 first in this squad? Lewis Roche went plus six. What a player he turned out to be coming in from the Youth Academy. Gavardiel went plus one. Inacio plus two. Yeah, we have some of the best players in the world, bro, at this team. Victor Canale is out on loan at Wolfsburg. I think he might be coming back to the team, as in his loan finishes. Um, but he didn't go any plus overall this season, which is sad to see. We have Matteo Bellini, who we've just promoted from the Youth Academy. This guy could be great. Uh, Shin Meyer, a guy who's already great. Plus four on this season. Definitely going to see a lot more game time for Shin in the next season, too. Mina went plus three, waiting for him to hit that 93 overall, bro. He needs to catch up to Theon, yeah? He was always leagues above Theon in terms of overall, and Theon just caught up rapid. His growth was insane, but Mina is by far one of the best players in this squad. Yeah, don't underestimate the power of this guy right here. <laughs> Yamashita has on loan only went plus two. I had high hopes for this guy when we promoted him from the Youth Academy, but hasn't hit those heights yet. Someone who is hitting heights though, Oscar Schofield, bro. Plus four to 86 overall at 20 years old. Absolutely insane player. Coppola went plus four, another player who we're looking to develop for next season. Frankie Stanley plus two hours on loan. Yamada went plus five. Some of these players we will never see again, bro. Jensen Bullock plus three. Max Naylor didn't move an overall. At least he didn't go down. You know, what a player this guy is. If we see major injuries next season again, he's just one of those players that can fill in wherever we need him to. He's a bit like James Milner. You know, he's got that experience. He's an old player. Been with us since the start. And we can just put him wherever we want to. This guy Ishikawa went plus three. But Billy Keynes went plus five. What a season he had. Man of the match by far, I think, in the Champions League final. In fact, that's got to be Morgan Elliott. He's got a hat-trick, bro. But still, a great performance and more game time inbound for Billy Keynes next season too. Hoffman went plus four. Potential to be special, but right now he doesn't feel it. Doesn't feel very special, but it is what it is, man. 
Valverde, minus one because he got injured. Four weeks, he's fit in, bro. But he's 30 years old now, injury prone. That's his second big injury of the season. We might look to move this guy on in the next season. I can't lie. He's only been with us for this one season. But what a season he had, yeah? He definitely led us to that Champions League final. And I'm convinced we would have won the FA Cup if Valverde was playing. So I'm gutted that he got injured there. Juric didn't go plus any overall. I had high hopes for this guy. Send him out to Brighton as well, a big team, you know? But no overall plus there. Bellinger went plus one to 93, Vogt plus three as well. A big player who got injured early on. Could have been something special this season, but maybe next season is going to be his breakout. Arthur Jones went plus three, even though he sat on the bench all season. He's on the loan list, but nobody wants to take him out. It's sad to see that youth lad is wasting his potential. But this is a guy we really care about. Morgan Elliott, bro. Minus three overall. 35 years old, he's retiring at the end of the season, and I'm going to miss him so much. Holy God, what are you this showing me? Come on! Open your eyes! I don't know how many times I have to say it, but I will miss this guy so much. And we are going to look for his regen. I don't even know if these sorts of players get regens, but we will look for him anyway. And I hope we can find him, bro. Yeah. Morgan Lee didn't change in overall. He actually went plus one to 90 and then went minus two when he got injured to 88 and went plus one again to 89. So on the season, it's a net increase of plus zero. Um, Hashimoto also at 89 overall though. He went plus four this season. He had some great moments with City Dieng, an unlikely partnership that carried us through that little portion when Barbosa was injured. Ono Masaki also plus four up to 89 overall. The boys are just growing. Tommy Bailey, I'm sure he was 87, bro wasn't he? He's gone down to 86 because he got injured, but just what a player. This guy is the super sub of the decade, yeah? Neymar's still here, bro. Why is he still here? 37 years old. He's robbing a living off me. Yeah, minus seven overall. Minus seven overall. And he's not even going to retire, bro. Neymar, go away, lad. Kivrat Skellia came in on a six-month loan. He will be going back to the club we signed him from at the end of the season. But he had a great little six-month stint with us, didn't he? Plus two overall as well since he came in here. And he's been great. We had Matsuda Kenji go plus two. Alex Calvo go plus two. Al Bear, aka Fraud Bear. Will he make an appearance with the Dream Chasers in Season 8? Or is that the end of his campaign? Is he going to look for a permanent move away? Did he enjoy his time at Arsenal? Will he try and move there full-time? We'll have to wait and see. And maybe that's a question you should ask China. Don't ask me. Ask China that question, okay? Ito Kyohei going plus one. Another utility player. Look at that right wing, left wing, CM, CDM. Crazy. But this guy I want to highlight for sure. David Zimmerman. Yeah, potential to be special. We sent him out. And he's gone plus five overall. A big growth there. He's now a gold player on Ultimate Team. Can play right wing or left wing. Definitely one for the future. Speaking of players for the future or players for right now, Javi Palacios. Yeah, he's up to 18 years old now. He's grown from that 17-year-old frame that he had. He looks a bit older than the face. I think he's got on some facial hair now. Uh, he's gone plus four overall this season now to 86. Insane season from this guy. We'll show you his stats in a minute. City Bloodclot Dieng, another player who had a crazy season. Plus four overall and well-deserved. He gave us some crucial moments, some crucial goals. Yeah, he actually scored the winner, didn't he, against Man City, I think, in that Carabao Cup final. But what a moment that was. Arthur Vilk, one of the world's best. No change in overall there. I think he went minus one, actually, from 93 to start the season after his injury. Jaden Barry, another man that we just keep on the payroll for some reason. He's gone plus two. Marcio Barbosa, though, plus three this season to 93. Had to work his way back up after injury two. This guy, Morgan Francis, went plus five. Don't even remember getting this guy, to be honest. And Jason Martins, to finish off the squad report, going plus two. Now let's look at the stats, boys, yeah? Most appearances goes to Theon. Billy Cairns played 56 games this season. I did not even think that he would have played that many, but spoilers for Palacios' goals there anyway. Palacios getting 28 goals and 10 assists in 55 appearances. That is huge. Let's sort it by goals, actually, so we can look at this. Our top scorer, Barbosa, 34 goals and 18 assists in 40 games is crazy, bro. But this is even crazier, possibly. Yeah, look at that. 38 appearances for City Dieng, 31 goals and 7 assists. And remember, like 15 of those appearances were for Chelsea. That's crazy. Now, I said at the start of the season, yeah, boys, that obviously last season we had Barbosa and Vilk got like 50 goals each. But then nobody else really contributed that much. So I said this season I wanted to see more goals from every position on the pitch. And we got that. Javi Palacios came in from the Youth Academy. He scored 28 in 55 appearances with 10 assists as well. Arthur Vilk, before he got injured, on a crazy streak. Look at that, more assists than goals as well. 22 goals, 24 assists in 33 games. Barbosa and Vilk are going to go on a rampage next season. 
But here's where those goals came in from the rest of the squad. Tommy Bailey picked up 12 with 7 assists. Bellingham, he went on crazy score and form at the start of the season. 11 goals and 14 assists in 51 games. Morgan Elliott, in his final season for the club, he played 26 games, lifted multiple trophies, got 11 goals and 9 assists. And some those 11 goals, bro, were probably the best 11 goals you'll ever see in career mode as well. Some of this guy's goals are insane. Ono Masaki picking up 10 goals on the season. Would like to see a bit more from Ono in terms of goal contributions, but 21 assists is great to see as well. Vogt picked up 6 with 3 assists, and also Kivratskelia picked up 6 goals in 8 assists. Inacio scored four goals this season. Bloody hell, lad. I didn't even know that. Yeah, one assist for him. Hoffman got four goals and three assists. Hashimoto only getting three goals, but 12 assists. When he went on that little rampage with Dieng, like, in my head, he scored, like, 10 goals. But 12 assists, three goals there. Albert only played 11 games for Arsenal. Why would he not play this guy, bro? 93 overall, and he's great. Can play right wing, centre forward, striker. Only played him for 11 games, but he scored three and got one assist. That's weird, though, isn't it? Theon got two goals and one assist. Billy Cairns with two goals and eight assists. Mina with one goal, two assists. Valverde, mainly our defensive midfielder, you know what I mean? I wasn't looking for goal contributions from this guy, but he still got one goal and six assists there. Stin Mayer got a goal. Joric out on loan, played 18 games, one goal, four assists. Jensen Bullock getting an assist there while he was out on loan at Burnley too. Neymar played one game, got one assist. <laughs> uh, Max Naylor played three games, no contributions there, but again, a defensive midfielder. Coppola getting one assist, don't even remember that. Uh, and Roche and Schofield not really contributing. Morgan Lee though, yeah, he's so far down the list, bro. That's crazy. Four assists in 15 appearances. One assist for Gavardiol, and that wraps up the stats sheet there, boys. Four season seven. Morgan Elliott's going to retire this season, boys, but we're also saying goodbye to another legend of the Dream Chasers. Bradley Nicholas is hanging up his boots. He's currently 33 years old, playing for RZ, Pellet Wolfsberger AC. Never heard of that club. Longest club title I've ever heard in my life, but he is going to retire at the end of the season. Bradley Nicholas, what a legend. One of the best players in those early days of the Dream Chasers, yeah? Rest in peace. <laughs> He's not dead, but rest in peace. <laughs> Well, boys, that is going to wrap up this video and wrap up Season 7. Look forward to... Wow, we've got a lot of players back from low in there, isn't it? Look forward to the goal compilation. Let's see who's back. Yamashita, Albert, Juric, Barry, Kyohei, Haas, Jonathan Haas as well, Jason Martins, and Ishikawa comes back from low in too. But yeah, man, look forward to the goal of the season compilation coming right up and make sure you drop a comment. But for now, boys, Season 7 is over. I appreciate everyone's support, everyone who leaves likes, comments, and subscribes to the channel. I couldn't be doing this series without you, and you just make it so entertaining for me to make and create. And as long as you are still watching, I will keep playing and keep creating, do you know what I mean? So, you can see on screen there, first in the Prem, winner of the Community Shield, runner-up in the FA Cup. That just messes us up there, bro. Winner of the Carabao Cup and the winner of the Champions League. Let's go ahead and end the season saying goodbye to Morgan Elliott. It's a sad day, but... We're on to new things, boys. Season 8 is right around the corner. Let me know what you want to see from it in the comments below and enjoy the goal compilation. Like, comment, share, subscribe. You know the vibes. Take it easy. Here's Tommy Bailey, though, picking the ball up. Playing it through to Barbosa. RDC overlap. Jude Bellingham. Lovely skill. Inside. Albert. He's touched it down. Bang! Albert with the equaliser. Already, just like that. Yeah, let's go, boys. Bellingham assist. Albert goal. These two weren't even supposed to be at the club this season and they've scored our first goal of the season 7 Premier League campaign. <laughs> and it's a lovely goal as well on the volley. Hey, yo, 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 yo. Yo, Albert, hold on. That was techie, bro. That was techie. A lovely little spin there from Bellingham. Little dink back inside. Did the, bo did the ball ever touch the floor yet? Chest, turn, volley. That's a fucking great goal. Oh my God. Be Bellingham from outside. Bang! Yeah? Jude Bellingham proving his worth for the Dream Chasers. Let's go, Jude. That's what I'm talking about, mate. Big inception from Bellingham. Here's Vilk looking to play through Barbosa again, and he is found on this time. Vilk, I was moaning about his passing in the last episode, but he's found Barbosa. Great dribbling. Barbosa in off the Barbosa. Yeah? 
Hoffman looking for an ambitious one to Vogt. A great pass again. This guy is an absolute legend. Vogt, what a pass. Oh my God. These two little Germans, yeah? Come on. These Germans, man. Yeah? I don't even know what to say about them, bro. Guten Tag, that's all I know how to say. Oh no! Bang! From way downtown, Ono oh Masaki, I've tried to tell you for the last few episodes, don't forget. He's a top class striker. Even when he's having a quiet game, he can still pop up with a goal, as we may well see today. Counter attacking, very much an option. Nice play, Ono, oh what a pass! Come on! Yes! What a fucking goal that is! <laughs> Oh no, Masaki, <laughs> what a cross. And Barbosa, what a finish, lad. Oh, oh, what a strike from Bellingham. That makes it two. Bang! From downtown Bellingham with the three pointer. That is a hell of a strike, that mate. Backups if we need. Oh my god, Billy Kane's nearly got his leg broken there. Is Hoffman from range. Bang! Hoffman, what a strike that is. 2 1. Let's go. Brian looking. Our test. That's a three. Bang! Lakers by six with a minute to play. Here's Bailey into Hashimoto. Hashimoto, an ambitious one. Palacios. Oh! Oi! Oi! Palacios, is that you, yeah? Is that you, yeah? Are you mad, bro? Are you mad, bro? A scorpion kick, yeah? Is that you, Palacios? Yeah, okay. I see you, lad. Why? Wow, he's eating the grass there, bro. Morgan, at least move for me. Oh! Oh, what a goal! What a strike! What a hit, son. Morgan Elliott, you beauty. Lads, <laughs> Jamie then I said, get out of my way, lad. Look at that. On the volley, that's goal of the season compilation stuff right there, mate. Right foot, Tommy Bailey with a big save from the keeper. It's fell. Elliot on the volley. Oh! Bang! I can't believe how good this guy is, bro. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Every single episode, he still manages to surprise me. Seven seasons in. Look at that. Look at that. Yo, the goal of the season compilation at the end of season seven is just going to be Morgan Elliott clips. Big tackle, Theon. On Turam. Oh, high press there from Southampton. Let's get that out, Valverde. Lovely. Bellingham. And the Yang linking up. Bellingham got some space. Inside, Tommy Bailey. Tommy Bailey, it's into Ono, one more, lovely play, Kovac Skelly to finish it off, that right there is a real dream chaser goal, yeah, that is quality football mate, let's go. Ono, what a pass, Kovac Skelly, what a pass, Palacios, what a finish, oh my god, Palacios has scored four goals off the bench. Big from Palacios, he wants another. He wants another, he's hungry for goals now. He's hungry for goals. He's hungry for goals. Oh, this guy is so good. He is so good. Oh, Ono Masaki. What a goal that is, let's go. 3-1, that's a huge goal to bring back the two goal comfort. I didn't even say nothing in the build-up because it was such a weird angle and so far out, yeah? I didn't think I'd even get it on target, bro, but what a strike! Oi! Dieng looking to play through Lee. He's charging. He spots Morgan Elliott at the back post for the hat-trick! For the hat-trick! Morgan Elliott, oh my god, what a cross from Morgan Lee! Oh my god, mate! The captain, the hero, the legend, Morgan Elliott. What a pass from Dieng and what a cross. 
<laughs> what a finish too as well. He make the keeper. No, 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 no. Did that make the keeper? No, don't do it. Don't do it. Did that make the keeper? Oh, it did as well. Oh my god, the guy's too clean. He's too clean, bro. Mina, well played. He's just so solid, Mina, isn't he? I don't really give Mina much credit these days, but he is just so solid whenever we need him to be. Here's Elliot. Thinking over Barbosa now. Barbosa. Look how many man they've got back now, Swansea. Barbosa getting the dribble and cooking. Can he find the gap? Barbosa! That's a great run! What a goal that is from Marcio Barbosa! That is magic! That is magic! Yeah? Sue! He's getting on. Could Billy Keynes fill that role? Captain Keynes in the future, possibly. Is the ball into Bellingham. We've got some space to strike from range. We've not hit from range in a while. Yeah, we love our long shots here at the Dream Chasers. Let's get that cooking. Is Elliot going for one? Oh! <laughs> Let's go! Let's go! Morgan Elliot from range. Bang! Let's go! Yo, did you see that kid's kit in the front row though? That was one of our colour schemes from a few years back and he's put it on our kit. That's mad, but Morgan Elliott. Oh, what a way to do it, bro. On your final game in Dream Chasers Colours. You cannot make this stuff up. That is beautiful. Back inside, Barbosa. Oh, mate. Ono's pass in the last few episodes has been on fire. But just right there, letting us down the last hurdle. Is Elliot cooking on the edge of the box. Give me some room to work with. Billy Keynes. Back into Elliot is idle. This is like Gerard, or this is like Jordan Henderson growing up watching Gerard. Elliot. Oh my god. Oh my god. He's the GOAT. He is the GOAT. He is the GOAT. Yeah. He is the GOAT. Billy Kane's playing about with his idle paws on the edge of the box. That's like a youth lad watching Gerard coming up through the ranks, yeah. Thinking I want to be Gerard, and then he's turned into him. Gets an assist to Gerard. That's what Billy Kane's just done there. Now Arthur Vilk's fuming. One player scored three goals. He's thinking, why haven't I scored any? Give me a chance. Look at that. He's fuming. He wants the ball. He's getting aggressive now. High press from Arthur Vilk. Lovely Billy Keynes. Here we go, Vilk. Vilk's not having none of it. Vilk's not having none of it. Arthur Vilk said, get out of my way. Do you know how long I've been caged up? And now I'm unchained. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Arthur Vilk out of the cage. He can spread his wings and fly again.